I'm here with Asad Abu Baker, the instrument system engineer for MOXIE, the Mars Oxygen ISRU experiment that is about to land with NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars literally in less than a week. How are you feeling, Asad, less than a week until this, this incredible feat of engineering that you've worked so hard on actually lands on Mars? I'm actually right now pretty relaxed because it's not really real yet. Uh, I think come Wednesday or Thursday, I'll start feeling uh, a little more nervous. Uh, probably Thursday morning, I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, you know, huddled around my computer waiting, waiting for information, just like everyone else. Fair enough. So could you walk me through Moxie a little bit, what it is and why people think that it could be a critical component to future crewed missions on Mars? Sure. Yeah. So, so Moxie in a nutshell is an oxygen generator. So it will take the CO2 from the Martian atmosphere. The atmosphere on Mars is 95% CO2 at very low density. And then it will um, basically convert that using an electrochemical process, stripping some of the oxygen off that CO2 and producing just pure oxygen. And the goal or the real intent, of course, you know, oxygen is useful for humans to breathe. Um, but most importantly, I think for human missions to Mars, it is a component of uh, rocket propellant, right? When we burn rocket fuel, we usually burn it with an oxidizer that we carry on the rocket. And so um, if you can make your oxygen on Mars, that means you don't have to bring it with you from Earth. And um, that saves a lot of launch mass. And that's really the, really the key uh, goal. Definitely. I think a lot of people, when they hear about MOXIE for the first time, they immediately think, oh, well, this will be creating oxygen for future Martian astronauts to, to breathe inside of habitats in their spacesuits. But is, is that technology really more so geared towards creating rocket propellant? I think it really is. And of course, it depends on how long of a mission that a Mars explorer might undertake. If it's you know, a few weeks to a month kind of thing, you could probably bring all of the oxygen that you need for the astronauts with you. Um, but if, um, but the amount of oxygen that you need for the return rocket doesn't change no matter how long you stay on the surface of Mars. So that's the, the, big, uh, the big hurdle that you have to overcome. Definitely. So as the system engineer for this incredible piece of equipment, what were the challenges in creating this? What are the major obstacles in taking Martian air and turning it into pure oxygen? Well, the biggest development that we had uh, during the MOXIE engineering process was the electrochemical part of it. So we worked with a company based in, uh, based just out of, outside Salt Lake City uh, that was called Ceramitech. They don't exist anymore now. There is a, they've transitioned to a company called Oxion Energy. Um, but they have a lot of experience in the fuel cell area and, and related technologies. And the electrolysis system for MOXIE is very similar to a fuel cell, except it's operated in reverse. And so we had to develop, uh, along with uh, our partners, a system that could take this very dry Martian atmosphere and, and convert it into CO2 in a way that didn't degrade. So this was <clears throat> one of the key uh, developments was figuring out how to build that system and how to design the supporting equipment such that it didn't over time slowly degrade in performance and slowly you get less and less and less oxygen out. And so that, uh, that was probably the hardest thing. The next hardest thing was packaging that thing because it operates at very high temperature, 800 degrees Celsius. And so we needed to package it in a way that not only minimize the amount of energy that was, um, consumed to keep it hot, to get it hot and keep it hot. And also in a way that while doing all that insulation, hold it in place during launch, which is a relatively violent um, event in any space missions, like probably the most challenging dynamic mechanical event that any space mission will see. And so that was a, that was a major engineering challenge for us. Absolutely. So I know that MOXIE is an experimental design. Um, how much, if that's even a question that you could answer, how much oxygen could this single unit produce over the course of its life throughout the Perseverance Mars 2020 mission? Mm -hmm. um, MOXIE is designed to produce at least about six grams an hour of oxygen in pretty much any Mars environmental condition that we might see. 
Uh, six grams an hour is not very much. It doesn't sound like very much and it's not very much. It's about um, <clears throat> enough to keep maybe a small dog alive. Uh, I'd like to use a Boston Terrier as an example of something in the 20 to 30 pound range. Um, <clears throat> and so if conditions on Mars are, are particularly favorable, such as there, it's very cold and very high pressure, which means we get a, a lot of density in the gas and we can get more atmosphere through MOXIE, then we could generate potentially up to about 10 grams an hour of oxygen um, while we operate. The, um, we will operate a minimum of about 10 times over the course of the uh, Perseverance mission and generate oxygen for about an hour each time. So that kind of gives you a sense of the total amount of oxygen. It's not very much. Definitely. So, you know, it kind of goes without saying that, you know, if Moxie's intended design is to turn Martian air into pure oxygen for the purpose of repurposing that into future rocket fuel, I'd imagine rockets would need quite a bit more oxygen for that fuel creation to be possible. What are the conversations looking like right now in terms of scaling up MOXIE with those future missions? What, what might that look like and how might that be possible? Right, so actually the MOXIE team has done a lot of work in trying to understand how MOXIE would scale up. And basically, if you wanted to take something like MOXIE and just produce a bigger version, you need to basically multiply the amount of oxygen produced by about a factor of 200. Um, that sounds like a lot, and it is. <laughs> and you would do that by, you you first, you take that electrolysis stack and you would make it bigger, first of all, and then you would add more layers. And, and as you make it bigger and add more layers, you increase the active area in the electrochemical uh, stack and you can create more oxygen that way. And then you would have multiple uh, stacks operating in parallel. And they would all be fed by, we in MOXIE, we use a small compressor to draw gas in from the Martian atmosphere and, and compress it up to near earth pressure and, and feed it into the electrolysis stack. So you would need a bigger compressor, you would need more compressors, uh, you would need enough thermal insulation. So we've done a lot of work into understanding how big this thing would be, it might be, you know, a cubic meter or maybe a little bit bigger. It might weigh about a ton. Um, it might consume sort of 10 kilowatts of power. Those are the kind of numbers that are uh, sort of the ballpark for a scaled up MOXIE that would actually support human exploration. Definitely. Uh, so I'm curious as someone so close to this mission, as someone so close to MOXIE itself, what, are, what is most exciting to you about this incredible piece of equipment? Um, I think, I think the, it's just the fact that we're taking a tangible step towards human exploration of Mars, I think is the most exciting part. Sure, there's a lot of interesting technical questions and technical uh, problems that we had to solve uh, in the development of MOXIE, but, you know, really it's the end goal that's the most interesting, right? We are trying to take the first steps to actually putting humans on Mars and getting them home. So, and, and MOXIE is unique. It's the first time this has ever been done. Unlike every other instrument that has ever been to Mars and is even currently on the Perseverance you know, rover, gonna land in less than a week, it is the only one that is solely dedicated to uh, preparing for human exploration. The, there are other instruments that will do, do interesting things. There's like weather stuff and there's a ground penetrating radar that might look for subsurface water. Um, but this is the only one whose sole purpose is human exploration preparation. Definitely. So this might be kind of a, an off the wall question, but I know that, you know, as something that would probably need to be scaled up quite a bit past where it, where it currently is, and with many different, uh, you know, companies and, and project teams looking to 3D printing as a solution to mm -hmm. realizing their, you know, their products on a place like the moon or Mars without having to actually fly all the pieces there. Is, is 3D printing something that the eventual scaling of MOXIE, do you think that they could ever coalesce? You mean like 3D printing from Martian, Martian materials and turning that into a useful things that- Again, um, might, be, might be a little, <laughs> a little no, too- it's, it's, That's a really interesting question. Um, I think uh, given what we know about resources and given what I know, which is not that much about 3D printing uh, useful things, not just, you know, 
plastics are useful, but you know, you really want to be able to 3D print metals. And in fact, Moxie does have some 3D printed metal components on it. But you know, that's um, there's a lot of infrastructure that has to be in place before you can 3D print metals on Mars. The the materials that we use for 3D printing metals here on Earth uh, are basically very, very carefully screened and selected have, um, for chemical composition, for particle size, um, and, and then the equipment that is used to actually produce these 3D printed parts is, is very complex. And so I think the first part is, how do you get the raw materials for 3D printing on Mars? You, you can't just take a shovel and, and take a bunch of dirt and load it into a hopper and, and hope that you get stuff out. You actually need to, you actually need to do refining, um, you know, mining, refining, um, separation, chemistry uh, to, to actually get the raw materials in a state that you can actually use. And I think that that's, that's really hard. Uh, so I, I think to answer, to go back around and fully answer the question, I would say that um, maybe not on the same time scale that uh, a scale that MOXIE, but it could certainly be something in the future. Maybe once there's more of a human presence on Mars, uh, then that could be uh, a possibility. Definitely. So I, I just have one more question. It kind of draws back to something you mentioned earlier. Uh, I think that a lot of people, you know, in looking at missions like Perseverance, like Mars 2020, uh, you know, with experiments like MOXIE on board, I think that they are still asking why? Why are we going to Mars? Why are we doing this exploration? Why are we making it possible to create pure oxygen on the surface of Mars? It's really cool, but why are we doing this work? Um, and, and as the systems engineer for MOXIE, I'm so curious how you would answer that. I mean, the 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 glib answer is you know because it's there um because you know it's it pushes the the limits of what humanity can do i think is a more serious answer um you know why did we go to the moon we went to, uh, obviously you know because of a proxy war with communist russia uh you know communist russia but aside from that um we we went to the moon because it was um a challenge right and you know, I think humanity is at its best when it puts its resources towards solving challenges that, okay, maybe they don't affect us on a day-to-day -day basis, but they show us what's possible um, for us as a species. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Uh, well, well, thank you so much for speaking with me. And I cannot wait to see Percy land. And I can't wait to see the results that you get from this experiment. I, it's it's going to be incredible to see. I can't wait either. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Assad. I really appreciate this. It's my pleasure. Take care. Thanks.